Well, hi there, sports fans, and welcome to another uh, exciting edition of Physics 12. Today we're going to look at uh, Lesson 5.7, which is on orbital mechanics. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a specific type of a problem, and we'll work it right through from beginning to end. So here we have uh, Earth, nice green Earth with some nice blue water around it, and we have a satellite uh, in the distance over there. So the question is, we've got a period of an 800 kilogram satellite orbiting the Earth is 5.8 times 10 to the third seconds. So find A, the altitude of the satellite, B, the gravitational field strength at the altitude of the satellite, C, the gravitational potential energy of the satellite, and D, the total energy of the satellite. All right, so let's uh, work it through here. We'll start with uh, part A. So find the altitude of the satellite. Well, here's a good place to start. Um, F equals ma, can't go wrong there. And in this case, um, F is going to be the force of gravity of the Earth. ma will be the uh, centripetal force um, on, the, on the satellite over here. And those two will have to equal each other if this satellite is going to remain in orbit around the Earth. So we have Fg equals mv squared over r. So that's where we went from F equals MA. All right, so FG equals MV squared over R. And uh, so the force of gravity um, on that satellite from the Earth is going to be M1, which is the mass of the Earth, times the mass of the satellite divided by the distance from the center of the Earth um, squared. And that'll have to equal M, uh, the mass of the satellite times its speed squared divided by the radius of its orbit, of the satellite, that is. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit. As you can see, the, the mass of the satellite cancels out because it's on both sides of the equation. And we don't know what uh, V is yet, so uh, there's our expression for V. Um, it'll be 2 pi r, 2 pi times the radius, which is the distance in one revolution, divided by the period of one revolution. That'll give us the speed. So therefore, uh, V squared is going to be um, 4 pi squared r squared divided by the period squared. And then we'll just put that into our equation like so. When we do that, it's going to look like uh, this. So we have g m1 over, over r squared equals 4 pi squared r squared over t squared times 1 over r. All right, that simplifies a little bit. Uh, so one of these r's cancel over here. And now uh, I assume that you can do the, the, uh, the algebra and rearrange this equation. So we get an expression then for r cubed. So we'll move r to the one side. We'll get r cubed on the one side over here. Um, and then as you move everything else to the, r, to the other side, then it'll end up looking like this. Uh, so there's where your, your algebra needs to come into the picture here. And if we put all the, the numbers in, then we get r is the cube root of g m t squared over 4 pi squared. Okay, so we just put all the numbers in there. We have g, we have the mass of the Earth, and then we have the period of the satellite divided by, by uh, 4 pi squared, and then we need, just need to take the cube root of that, and we get the radius of the satellite's orbit is 6.98 times 10 to the 6 uh, meters. But that doesn't answer the question, because the question was, what is the altitude of the satellite? So you have to, again, you have to make sure you read the question very carefully to know what it is that it's asking for. And in this case, it's asking for the altitude. So in other words, the distance from here to here. So we have to subtract the radius of the Earth. So uh, that distance is from the center of the Earth. So the altitude is the radius minus the radius of the Earth and we get 6.98, which is uh, our answer here. Subtract the radius of the Earth, and we get 6.0 times 10 to the 5 meters uh, above the surface of the Earth. So in other words, the, the satellite is uh, 60,000 meters above the Earth, or 60 kilometers. So it's 60 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So that answers part A. So let's move on to part B. So what's the gravitational field strength at, the, at that altitude, that particular altitude of the satellite? Uh, well, we use the gravitational field, we use a small g. Now that g is not necessarily at this, at, on the surface of the Earth. We use that for gravitational field strength um, anywhere. 
So we know that on, on the surface of the Earth, G is 9.8. So obviously it's going to be something different where the satellite is now. So that's what we're trying to find out. And that's going to equal the centripetal acceleration of the satellite. And that's going to be given by uh, G times mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the orbit of the satellite squared. So we just have to put those numbers in there. And there's G 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the orbit of the satellite squared. And when we do that math, we get 8.2 uh, meters per second squared. So that's the gravitational field strength uh, where the satellite is, which is 60 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And that compares with 9.8, which is at the surface of the Earth. So it makes sense. Um, if you're the further away from the center of the Earth you, you get, the gravitational field strength is going to decrease. And at 60, meet, uh, 60 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, it will be 8.2, not 9.8. Okay, part C, the gravitational potential energy of the satellite. Well, potential energy is minus G M1 M2 over R. Again, that's just the formula, which is in your formula sheet. And so we put the numbers in, uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 for G. Mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And the mass of the satellite, which is 800 kilograms, divided by the radius of the orbit of the satellite, 6.98 times 10 to the 6 meters. And when we do the math, we get minus 4.6 times 10 to the 10 uh, joules. So that's the potential energy of the satellite. And the last part is the total energy of the satellite. Okay, well in this case, the total energy, it has potential energy and it has kinetic energy. And again, that's one of the things that you have to determine. Anytime you're asked for the total energy, you have to determine what kinds of energy are we talking about here. And in this case, it'll have potential energy and kinetic energy. So we just put those uh, numbers in in our formulas. Potential energy, we just fig figured out from part C, which is minus 4.6 times 10 to the 10 joules. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And so uh, we know that V, again, is uh, 2 pi r over t. So v squared, uh, then we'll just put in the numbers, 1 half times 800 times 4 pi squared times the radius of the satellite squared uh, divided by its period squared. And so when you do that calculation, you should get minus 4.6 times 10 to the 10 plus positive 2.3 times 10 to the 10. And that uh, ended up being the kinetic energy of the satellite. So when you do that calculation, your final answer is minus 2.3 times 10 to the 10 uh, joules. So all of, uh, an answer to all of the different parts of the, the problem that was uh, presented is the, the height of the satellite, or the altitude of the satellite is 6.0 times 10 to the 5 meters, which is 60,000 meters or 60 kilometers. The gravitational field strength at that point is 8.2 meters per second squared. The total energy of the satellite is minus 4.6 times 10 to the 10 joules. And, no, sorry, that's the potential energy. Potential energy is minus 4.6 times 10 to the 10 joules. And this would be the total energy of the satellite then is minus 2.3 times 10 to the 10 uh, joules. So this is a typical kind of a problem. Uh, there's a lot of calculations, a lot of numbers uh, to keep correct and a little bit of algebra involved. Um, but again, just follow it step by step and you should have good success with these kinds of problems.